Dan, but, but Mike, if you'd like to come in there as well, please. A couple of years ago, people were talking about the Aston Martins being the, the pink Mercedes. Um, we do know that there's a technology sharing agreement between the two teams, Mercedes and Aston Martin. Could you elaborate exactly what you take from them now? Is it only the power unit, is it the full powertrain, hydraulics, electronics, etc. please? Warren Stroll is fed up with Aston Martin's poor performance even after upgrades. Big changes could be coming, with top team members and drivers at risk, including his son Lance. Could this be the end for Lance Stroll? Aston Martin is seriously struggling in 2024. They are now a slow motion car crash and you don't even need to be a Formula 1 expert to see it. Just look at the points chart, compare their performance in 2023 to now and it's very clear. They've lost a whopping 110 points after just 8 races. They've slipped down the rankings, letting Mercedes and McLaren zoom past them. If this freefall continues, they might find themselves battling it out with racing bulls for a not-so-glamorous sixth place in the Constructors' Championship. And let's be real, nobody saw this coming for a team that once showed so much promise. This wasn't the plan at all. Just last year, Essen Martin was riding high, snagging six podiums in the first eight races. Everyone thought they were on the path to greatness, but then the upgrades started rolling in, and instead of pushing the team further, they seemed to drag them backward. It's like they hit the reverse button. After those initial successes in 2023, they only managed two more podiums for the rest of the season, and now in 2024, they haven't even come close to a podium finish. Not once. It's a trend that's raising some serious red flags. The team just doesn't seem to understand their car at a fundamental level. This issue isn't unique to Aston Martin. Mercedes faced similar problems back in 2022 and 2023. It's a major headache and one that often calls for a complete overhaul of the squad. A lot of people had high hopes for Dan Fallows, the former head of aerodynamics at Red Bull who was brought in as Aston Martin's technical director, but it seems he only grasped the ground effect era up to a point. The situation is a prime example of how bringing in high-profile members from a successful team doesn't automatically make you a race-winning contender. Dan Fellows came with a stellar reputation from Red Bull where he was the head of aerodynamics, but that hasn't translated into instant success for Aston Martin. It's a harsh reality that Lauren Stroll is beginning to understand more and more in the past few weeks. So a big meeting is coming up between Lauren Stroll, Dan Fellows, and Mike Crack to figure out what went wrong with the car at Imola. The stats from that race are pretty rough. Aston Martin was nowhere to be seen even after using four sets of tires. It's a harsh reminder, with many experts saying they're back to where they were at the end of 2022. It's been one heck of a ride for the squad, especially considering the hefty investments they've poured into developing new facilities in their shiny new home. Now, while some people are pointing fingers at the fact that Aston Martin and Mercedes still share the same wind tunnel, there's an interesting twist. Take McLaren, for instance. They're a prime example of sharing not always equal caring, or at least not in this case. What's really interesting to note is to see how Aston Martin was pretty optimistic about the upgrades they introduced at Imola. They were hoping these changes would take the car to new heights, but it ended up backfiring on them pretty badly. Instead of widening the operating window, they ended up narrowing down. Now, that's the complete opposite of what you'd want to achieve, especially after the current regulations. The AMR24 turned into a bit of a wild beast. It was unpredictable, unstable, and a real handful to handle. You could practically hear the frustration over the radio, especially when Alonso mentioned how the steering had become tougher and the overall driving experience just wasn't up to scratch. It's definitely not the kind of ride you'd want to be stuck with, that's for sure. The direction that Aston Martin is headed in right now? Not exactly sunshine and rainbows. Imagine being in Dan Fallows or Mike Crack's shoes. They've got to face their boss, who's been busting his chops to pump money into the team from snagging that Aramco partnership to selling off minor stakes to Arctos. And what does he get in return? Green cars, scraping for scraps on the track week after week. Now that's a really tough spot to be in. Also, the qualifying gap between Aston Martin's drivers has really tightened up lately. Stroll has actually managed to out-qualify Alonso in the last three events, but despite that, it's Alonso who's been raking in the points for the team in 2024. The two-time world champ has brought in a whopping 75% of the team's total points. That's seriously impressive, putting him in fourth place behind Hulkenberg and Albon. Looks like Alonso still got that magic touch when it comes to scoring big on race day. Was the Tifi stopping last year, bringing out the virtual safety car. It cost Perez that day. One year on, the stop for the Aston Martin. And they are waiting five seconds before they go to work. And into the fast lane. Adding to the drama, Aston Martin achieved a rather infamous feat. They were the only team that actually got slower in Monaco than last year. Yup. While pole position times improved by as much as a whole second, Aston Martin somehow managed to go in the opposite direction. 
It's a head scratcher, to say the least, and definitely not the kind of record you want to be setting. Sure, there are a bunch of factors at play here, like traffic and different strategies, but let's face it, coming in slower than 2023 despite splashing an extra $100 million on car development is a really tough pill to swallow. It's definitely a setback that the team should take some time to think about, but right now, it seems like they're missing the point when it comes to figuring out where they've gone wrong. For a team gunning to break out of the midfield and snag some podiums, having two top-notch drivers is key. But here's the thing, even though Alonso is the kind of driver you trust to steer the team in the right direction, it seems like the car itself is the biggest headache right now. He seems to have lost a bit of confidence, and you can tell from his statements that the team's struggling to figure out what the upgrades of the Carve Elite needs. Seems like a big part of the blame falls on Dan Fallows and his crew. Being the chief aerodynamicist on one team and the technical director on another, well, those are two totally different gigs. With all the latest drama around Fallows, it's starting to look like Lauren Stroll might be eyeing up a replacement for this seasoned, high-profile member of the squad. Now, if there's one thing Aston Martin isn't short on, it's cash. They've been flashing their wallets time and time again, making tempting offers to drivers like Verstappen and top-notch engineers like Newey. But after striking out on both fronts with the Red Bull crew, they've shifted their gaze to Ferrari's current technical director, Enrico Cardile. Now, what if Newey joined Ferrari? It'd be really interesting to see how he fits in with their team and works with what they've got going on. So if Newey were to swoop into Ferrari, it could shake things up big time for the high-profile folks already there. They might need to step out of their comfort zones to adjust to his arrival. Now, this scenario hasn't happened yet, and it might not even be great news for Ferrari. Passing up the chance to snag one of the most experienced and successful engineers in the game? That's a no-brainer, kind of like what happened with Hamilton's signature too. Therefore, if Cardall decides to take on a new challenge, it could spell trouble for Aston Martin's current technical director, Dan Fallows. He's under increasing pressure to squeeze performance out of a car that his team just can't seem to grasp. When talking about the AMR24, Fernando Alonso wasn't feeling too optimistic. He noticed the team slipping back into the midfield instead of keeping up with the front runners. So we, yeah, we have an agreement which is, um, you know, powertrain and gearbox and um, things like suspension internals at the rear, which we can, um, we're allowed to do. Um, obviously, there's there's some fairly strict limits in terms of what we're allowed to to share now. So um, we know there's no aerodynamic surfaces or or any kind of sharing of data in that in that, in that sense. So um, yeah, that's that's pretty much the limit of, of what we do. But he stayed optimistic, saying things can change quickly. He pointed out how a good car upgrade could boost them up by five or six points in a flash. That's the goal for the next upgrade package, and they're putting in the work to make it happen. But here's the thing. Putting in the work and actually seeing the results on the track are two different things, and if you're Lawrence Stroll, anything that comes out of the mouths of Alonso, Crack, or Fellows, or even of his own son Lance might just sound like an excuse. The man's done everything he could building new facilities and branding the team like a pro, but the results are still nowhere to be seen for the Silverstone-based squad. That said, big changes are on the horizon for Aston Martin. The real question is whether they'll be for the better or for the worse. Because let's face it, while Alonso was poking fun at Alpine last year, it seems like his own team is walking down a similar path this year. And that wraps it up. Now what do you think? Do drop your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video for more awesome content like this. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Until next time, stay awesome and we will be back with another one.